Well, hello folks. Welcome back to In The Loop TV with myself, your host, Don Grant, CTC Cutting Tool Counselor, here with another exciting episode. It's funny, I always say exciting, but they're exciting for me. Hopefully they're exciting for you. Uh, sporting a new vest today. Looks very nice. Valor Hole Making, one of our new brands we just launched this year. If you haven't had a chance to try them, very great hole making brand. Drills, thread mills, spotting tools, countersink, you name it. Great brand, all made right here in the US. That's my plug, Harvey Performance. But I'm really liking the vest. It feels festive. It's kind of cold here in Chicago. So, folks, before we get started on this episode, please do me a favor, just hit the subscribe button. Hit the like button and share it with anybody you think might gain from this knowledge. It really does help me support what I do for Harvey Performance and bring this information to you. So please, if you can, do that for me. I'd much appreciate it. This episode is going to be broken up. We're going to do a series on this one. It's very important. What are we going to talk about? We're going to talk about ball, nose, end mills. Ball, nose, end mills covers a lot of things and a lot of features. So there's a lot of information I want to talk about and bring to you on ball nose end mills, especially when it comes to 3D surfacing. So I can't wait, I'm very excited. Come back and let's talk about it next. Well, looky there, you came back. You came back. I'm so happy you came back to watch this episode on ball nose end mills. Ball nose end mills. There is a lot to cover with a ball nose end mill. That's why we're breaking this one up into a bunch of series, mainly around something called 3D surfacing. Okay? Now, your key with a ball nose end mill and that phrase saying 3D surfacing is kind of a clue, right? A ball nose end mill has a lot to do with surfacing. And a surface has different finishes, and it has different contours, and it has different shapes. You can't do that with a standard end mill. So we have to use a ball nose end mill and use our tool path to actually do a finish. So when you're using a ball nose end mill, and what I mean is, let's just look at this. The end of the end mill, the end of it, has a ball, full form radius. That's because we're gonna use all of that radius to create all these contours and all these finishes on a 3D surface and some 2D surfaces, straight walls and stuff if you need to, and to get the best finish possible per your requirement of your print. So there's a lot of things that goes into that ball nose end mill, how to use it, the shape of it, how many flutes are on it, how you want to tilt it, the angle. There's so many things that I want to talk about with that, that we're going to break it down into segments. So what is this segment going to be on? We are going to talk about the surface that you can achieve with that ball, something called scallop height, scallop height, how do we manipulate it? How do we change it? And what is scallop height? And what does that have to do with your surface? We can't do it here. Well, we could, I always say that. Where are we gonna go? We're gonna run to the shop, for I can put my hat on, and we can discuss it next. Well, folks, now we're in the shop. Well, not officially in the shop. Kind of, well, I guess I'm in my parents' basement. Hey, Mom! The meatloaf! I'm kidding, I own my own house. This is my house. Don't live with my mother. So when you have a 3D surface, which means something that has a lot of contours and angles, and you can't hit it with a straight square end mill on the side, and use the side of that, we have to use a ball nose, and we have to create a surface. Now that surface is going to create, because of the radius that's on the bottom of the tool, it's gonna to create all these scallops. And how far we create those scallops apart and how deep we go, it's going to give us something called a surface finish or something we judge either by an RMS or by an RA. RA seems to be a little bit more standard. RA stands for roughness average. 
So understand what we're doing is we're taking a ball nose, we're trying to hit a surface, and we're going to use that radius with a series of step overs to make that aesthetically look as good as we can and meet our requirements on our print. So 3D surfacing with a bald nose end mill, because remember this whole episode is on bald nose end mills, is about how do we use it. And when you're using a bald nose end mill to get a 3D surface, what you're trying to do is take minimal step overs, very light radial step overs, very light axial depths of cut, and you're trying to achieve the best finish possible. Now, because you have that ball nose, you're creating little pockets that create a cusp height, top, okay, and a root in the bottom. And the distance between that root and that cusp is what controls your finish, okay? So we want to maintain that, we want to control it. So let's give an example and let's make this as clear cut. So what you're doing with a ball nose is you're taking straight lines or on a surface and you're stepping it over to make your finish look good. Let's take a quarter inch. Now, let's take a half inch diameter tool and give you that example. If I take a half inch diameter tool and I just run straight down and we'll do, let's say 10 lines here so you can see this. And I run straight at 10 lines, we have a cusp height, which is the top, and we have a root. And this is what it looks like. There is a distance in between that, that by eye looks one way and by dimensionally looks another way, okay? So now, before we change the diameter of the ball, let's take that same ball nose with a half inch radius and let's change our radial step over a lot tighter. And now let's measure the cusp height on the top and the root on the bottom. You'll see from this that it got smaller, okay? Now what that's gonna do, it's gonna measure better so this is that radial step over. It's going to measure better and it's going to look better to the eye. It'll also feel better too if you're running your fingers across it. Now let's do a third thing. Instead of using a half inch diameter tool, okay, let's use a three quarter inch diameter tool, step over the same amount and you'll see because of that larger radius we can achieve a better looking finish and we can control that cusp height, how high that is at the bottom and the root at the bottom. Now one bonus, bonus with a larger diameter tool is it's less passes. It's less passes so you can achieve a better finish with less passes because it's taking more material. But we have the X factor of whether or not you can use that large of a ball nose. Does that make sense? Does it kind of make sense? Let's put these all three. Top one is a half inch at a certain amount of step over. Second one is a half inch ball nose, but we decrease the step over and you can see the root and the top is a lot better. The third one is just going with a larger diameter ball nose. Okay, so we can spread that radius out. The larger the ball nose, the larger that radius gets and the better the finish gets and we can take less passes to get through that whole thing. That's how cusp, uh, cusp height works. That's how scallop height works. That's how 3D surfacing actually works to create that surface. Now you can do this on all different surfaces. You could even do it on a straight line. Even if you wanted a really nice finish on a floor and let's say your end mill wasn't achieving it, you can use a ball nose. It's gonna take a lot longer. But you can use a ball nose to achieve that just by controlling your radial step over, and by controlling the diameter of your ball nose. Wow, that's it. Scallop height, 3D surfacing, all around ball nose. There's so many other things we're gonna talk about with ball noses. Make sure you come back for the next episode. It's gonna get good, but maybe, hopefully, you understand scallop height, which is what's achieving your finish. You're using a ball nose, mainly finishing. That's how you achieve a good finish. Uh, if you didn't understand it, didn't really get it, Go back and watch it again, okay? I'm here for your pleasure. Just watch it again, and hopefully you get it. If you don't get it after that, then you can put some comments below, and I'll see if I can answer those specifically. We have a lot of great content on our In The Loop blog, okay? The little link, I'll put a little web page thing up here. You can take a look at that. You can go to there and take a look at it. That would be great too as well. Come back, but before I go, 
three guarantees in life. We all know what they are. Death, taxes, and spring passes. Have a great rest of your week, folks.